Hey everybody, I think it's time for us to talk a little bit about pitcher fatigue. This is one of these things that people don't usually talk about when we talk about baseball simulators. And uh, what I'll tell you that you see from most modern baseball simulators is you'll see an emphasis on uh, the uh, number of pitches that a uh, pitcher has um, given up uh, or has uh, pitched. And uh, it's really kind of a modern um, uh, notion of baseball. So I know that Joe Poznanski recently wrote an article about pitch counts, about paying attention to them. Um, I know that as early as the 1970s, there was some uh, attention paid to pitch count, but not really that much. Um, the idea back then still was that, you know, you let guys sort of eat innings and you paid more attention to how they were pitching than to how many pitches they threw. I mean, good heavens, we know that Nolan Ryan in some of those games with um, high numbers of strikeouts was throwing 200, 215, 220 or so, right, which is a little bit extreme, what we would consider today to be a little bit extreme. Um, I do want to talk about this, though, because um, it's not the only way to look at uh, the way that baseball could be played, and it really is kind of a problematic thing if you're playing with older seasons. We haven't seen this necessarily so much with Diamond Mine Baseball because we know that 1949 is kind of unusual. There are a lot of walks and there's um, a number of strikeouts as well. I will maintain that there are too many foul balls, but um, it's kind of hard to um, say that without just saying that it feels wrong with uh, really no proof one way or another. Now, the trick about this is that if you have a game that does have a pitch-by-pitch engine, which is kind of the way that most baseball games are today, the big three, which is uh, Diamond Mine Baseball, um, OOTP, and Action PC Baseball, not necessarily big three in that order, um, all uh, use uh, pitch-by-pitch modes and all have fatigue ratings that are based mostly on the number of pitches thrown, right? It's interesting, but it will cause problems for you if you are replaying, say, Dead Ball Era Seasons. I'm going to show you something that's a little bit different, right? And I haven't, we haven't spent a whole lot of time really looking through how this uh, Skatersoft NP3 game actually works. But the um, advanced pitching rules here are a little bit uh, different. So the way that this game works, if you are familiar with the app uh, uh, Master game, it will seem sort of familiar to you, but it might be a little bit confusing. Um, what happens with this game is... The, uh, there are different types of advanced pitching rules. There's one for starters and one for relievers. Starters will have a base pitching grade, which is anything from 1 to 30. They also have a fatigue rating, which controls how long they are um, able to uh, pitch. I'm trying to look through here and uh, see if there's an example of the chart. I think we have to actually um, click over on, is it on the board? Yeah, advanced pitching chart. There we go. So when we look at this, you can see that every uh, pitcher will start off with a certain uh, grade and then a certain Q rating. And uh, the uh, thing that happens to the base grade in terms of how the uh, boards are actually read depends upon the combination of the two. So to give you a better example, since it's APA, really the pitcher grades only will affect numbers 7 through 10. Um, usually 8, 9 are the ones that are affected the most. And so you can see as we change from one grade to the next, things um, turn into base hits or are still out. So that's kind of the way it works. And that happens for every single one of these base situations, right? And you see things that are odd. For example, a 7 uh, result with runners on first and third is a base hit against an A. But against a B, it's a fly out to center field. However, 8 and 9 and 10 are base hits against that B, whereas they are all outs against the A. Bit of gamification happening there. When you go over to the advanced pitching chart again, you'll see that some players will start off at a higher grade, and then they automatically have their grade reduced as time goes on. The rules about those reduction depend about the reductions depend upon um, exactly what happens. So um, and the beginning of the game, let's say that we have, like they say here, a 15 Q2 rating. At the very beginning of the game, he's going to be rated an A for innings one through three. As soon as the fourth inning starts, he becomes a B. And um, then his grade will then, as we look at this again, he then has what is called the adjustment. So if he's made it through seven innings and then has two base runners, then he will be reduced by one letter grade down to a C and then eventually down to a D when we get to the cutoff grade. So the cutoff means that as soon as we hit the ninth inning, for example, this guy is going to become a D pitcher. It's pretty interesting how this works. It has nothing to do with pitch count, and instead it has a lot to do with um, innings pitched to a certain degree and also has a lot to do with uh, sort of this uh, sliding scale approach to uh, pitcher fatigue. It's actually a lot different than the um, original app a game system in which uh, you will see 
see uh, pitchers um, get better as time goes on. When we're talking about uh, Staffa's game of the uh, Skeetersoft NP3 game, pitchers will gradually become worse as we play. It's an interesting approach to uh, pitching. Um, I've played quite a bit with this. I think it works actually quite well. Now, there are a couple of um, things in these rules that allow pitchers um, to uh, continue to pitch at a high level. For example, if I believe that there is a rule, I'm not sure if it's written in here or not, that if a pitcher is throwing a no hitter, he will remain at his current grade. Actually, here it is. Yeah, if there's a if um, he hits the cutoff. So, uh, for example, and I'll show this to you here. Let's see. There we go. Cutoff. Uh, the nine equals D means once the starting pitcher reaches the ninth inning, he reverts to a D-rated pitcher. However, there is an exception. If he is pitching a no hitter, he remains at his current grade until he's given up his first hit, at which point he immediately becomes a D um, pitcher. So. If we go back and we look at those boards again and uh, we look at that uh, grade 15 Q2, as soon as he hits the ninth inning, he will become a D pitcher unless he's throwing a uh, no hitter, at which point he will probably still be a B um, because that's um, he hasn't reached those two base runners to move him from a B to a C. Anyway, that's is pretty interesting. It's a different type of idea, and it's a different type of uh, way to approach this stuff. Um, something that I really kind of wanted to uh, bring up, a lot of games, like I said, these days care a lot about pitch count. I have my own concerns about pitch count and like exactly how much it really means and whether we are um, uh, making much ado about nothing or not. Personally, I think that uh, while pitch count is an interesting idea, I think it's really overblown and is more a trend than it is anything else because not all pitches that are uh, created equal. And um, that's something that anybody who's read Pitching in a Pinch by Christy Mathewson knows. And it surprises me that um, these basic ideas that um, were kind of commonplace and common sense in baseball for so many years have been sort of thrown out. That's another video, by the way, if we're going to talk about pitcher fatigue, pitcher rest, and um, the way that uh, arm motion works, the lack of actual windups today and stuff like that. We have a lot more to talk about on that front, but I'll leave you with this today. When you're playing your game, uh, take a look at how the uh, pitching system works. I'm pretty sure that you'll find that most um, card and dice games have pitching systems that are similar to the one that I showed you in which there's some sort of um, uh, grading uh, or graded scale that allows guys to kind of go from one level to the next as the game uh, continues. Um, and I think that as you play along, you'll find that you'll get better results in terms of uh, complete games from these card and dice games than you will from the uh, really fancy pitch count uh, focused games. I'd love to know what your experience has been, though. Let me know down in the comments. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.